Good morning. If it's morning there. Uh, it's now 7 o'clock in the morning here. I've been up since about 4. I've had some coffee. And I'm going to continue to have coffee. I needed to uh, get some paperwork done. And being in the, uh, an insomniac, I slept for a while, but then I woke up. Here, been up. I need to get things done and ready to talk to doctors and the VA and uh, a lot of other things, a lot of other places. Not just for my father, but for myself too. In fact, this week I uh, I had an issue early in the week, and I had an appointment on one day and missed it. Totally forgot it because I didn't know. I forgot what day it was. So my personal appointment. I missed because I was overwhelmed doing other things. I forgot what day it was. They sent me a really interesting letter telling me how their time is very valuable and la la la. Well, so is mine. In any case, I have a lot of uh, a lot of things I do and have to do or can do. We all have to know our limits. We can't overshoot our limits because there are limits. I've got a lot of manuals, what I call the Sears catalog manuals, this big. And most people won't under, younger people wouldn't understand what I'm talking about, but the Sears and Roebuck catalog used to be uh, come in the mail for, pe for people. And they were this thick, and they could order stuff. It was the Amazon before Amazon. Mail order, everything. The catalogs, you'd go through and find things you could afford to buy or wanted, and then bought them. And when you were done with the, the that year's book, we're done with a bunch of pages, apparently, back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, people would use that as toilet paper. Oh, times have changed for the better. But they used to do that. But I also have other manuals and books that are that I try to read through that are helpful. This is one of them. Want to get a good shot of that? The 36-hour day. Now, see that yellow come in? <laughs> Dark in the back of the room. The 36-hour day, a family guide to caregiving for people who have Alzheimer's disease and other dementias by Nancy L. Mace, M.A., and Peter V. Rabbins, M.D., and M.P.H. Miles per hour? That's helpful. It's been helpful in, 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 to some degree for me. doesn't deal specifically with me, but... There are elements of it that do, and other elements that will come into play later. So it is helpful. But I'm also in other groups, because I, want, I wanted to see what other people are going through in, this, in a similar situation, in advanced situations. So I'm in some group, a group in, on Facebook, and a group in another thing for family caregivers, support for those with dementia and Alzheimer's. And boy, the postings on there, the floods of them, they're oftentimes heartbreaking and terrifying when you when you apply what you're reading to what may happen to you later. And but but for me it makes me feel really lucky that my father is not as bad off as what what they're going through. Because my dad is very manageable. He doesn't require intensive things like cleaning him and dressing him. And, but that will come at a different time down the line because my dad's almost 90. And one woman was writing, writing about um, how she felt so terrible as a person because... She didn't want to be her mother's caregiver anymore. And she didn't sign up for all of this. And it was overwhelming to her. It was horrible. 
and honor thy mother and thy father, that kind of thing. And it's just, and her family is on her about it, about her wanting to not do it anymore. That's very common, more common than you think. Because when you get into caregiving, become a family caregiver, everybody will be there saying, we'll be there for you. We'll help. I'll take dad and do this. Uh, and then you can go off and do whatever for a while. That that never pans out. Almost never. And they're not there for you. They will drift away. And when they do come over for like holidays, because you can't do anything interesting, and your, and your parent is basically sitting there like this, it overwhelms them, and so they don't really, they go off and do other things without you, and uh, it's just part of the deal, but when you go into caregiving, when you go into it with your eyes open, and then with the understanding that you're going to be on this journey alone, you're going to be, uh, except for the person you're caregiving for, you're going on that journey together and nobody else will be there to help you. Ah, unless you're wealthy. If you're wealthy, then you have options. If you're not wealthy, very few options. But I did, re I did reply to that woman who was feeling so terrible about herself. Now I'll read you what I wrote her. I said, you are not alone. Not everyone can be a full-on caregiver. It is not simply that they don't want to be a caregiver. It is that they cannot be, either mentally and or physically. Even with training, not everyone can do that for another person. It can be especially overwhelming when, the, when that person uh, who you are caregiving for is a parent or other adult loved one. You have too many memories, too much backstory, and are essentially too close to the subject matter to be able to be objective or detached. Most family caregivers are, for lack of a better word, slaves. That sounds harsh, but I, I say that because many of those people are unpaid or underpaid and are on the clock 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with little or no respite. Not everyone can handle being a caregiver or being a parent or even being able to work in customer service. Not everyone can live in servitude. It is not a moral failing that we cannot all do what some people can do or can tolerate emotionally and mentally. Those who are trained and willing, hired, and are paid and objective, they get to go home after a certain number of hours and detach. Family caregivers don't have that. They live and sleep and breathe in that role. There are levels to everything and everyone. If we, if we can easily change a diaper and wipe the backside of a child, that does not mean that we can do that for an adult parent, loved one, or even a stranger. One person might be able to bathe their spouse or a sibling but cannot handle doing that for a parent or adult family member. And the woman had written about the, some of the things she did for her mother, and I, I wrote, I said, you wrote that you wipe and clean your mother. I cannot do that for my father. That is my limit and level. I know this and have stated that to my father's doctors and social workers. I said, when the time comes that he must wear adult diapers but cannot wipe and clean himself, we will have to find another care situation for him. 
because that is beyond me. They all said that they understand completely. Not everyone can be that level or other levels of being a caregiver. I had a, a time when my one of my siblings was going through a, a lot of problems, physical problems. At the same time, I'm dealing with my dad here with his Alzheimer's and dementia. And she suddenly began to need a lot of care and help and assistance in the in and out of nursing homes, hospitals, whatever. And there came a time when I got her home from a hospital one time and she they hadn't bathed her or let her bathe or she refused to be bathed there or whatever. I, I don't remember. Or was uh, from the ER. I can't recall. But she wanted to take a, a shower or a shower. So we got her into the bathroom. She couldn't get into the tub. So it ended up having to be a sponge bath, towel bath with her sitting on the toilet, and she needed help to reach things and do things, so I had to be there for that. And that was very difficult for me. Uh, if it had been someone else, uh, Angelina Jolie, I wouldn't have had a problem, but it's my sister. Eldest sister, and there are a lot of memories and backstory, a lot of things that you don't want to that that brings to mind when you're standing in front of a naked relative needing help, that that kind of help, and that was overwhelming for me. But I I managed to get through it. But it's not something I, I knew that was not something I could do every day. It's like I know I can't uh, wipe myself without thinking. Oh, I I wish I didn't have to do this. I can't do that for someone else. Wipe the backside. And she progressed to a point where she needed someone to be able to do that for her, too. And that was beyond me. And I said, no, no, no. And when, when it comes to my dad, if I ever get to that point, that's going to be a no, no, no. I don't want to. I don't want to even touch myself down there, and then have to wash your hands for three hours afterwards. We all have our we all have our own peculiarities and limits, and we all have to know those limits and walk into a caregiving situation with our eyes fully open, understanding that we cannot count on anyone else. That even if we can get help from somebody else, we need to go in it. It's the understanding that it's just us. Holding up the world, and the world being our parent, or whoever we're caregiving for. He might cook and clean and do the medications and uh, even help somebody dress. You're not going to have somebody, most likely, going to come over every day, two or three times a day, to help them go to the bathroom and to wipe them and to shower them. If you... If you, if you plan that with somebody else in your family, a sibling, guarantee, I guarantee that's not going to work out the way you plan. They'll put it all on you. So just understand your limits. Not everyone, not everyone can be a full-on caregiver. You can be a, a caregiver on many levels. But there are some levels you, you can't do. Here, here, or even here, physically. Inability to pick somebody up. My father, I can pick up. Get off the ground. My sibling, when she fell on the ground, I couldn't get her up. She was dead weight. She would, there were two or three EMS workers that had to come in to get her off the floor. And she's, you'd think you'd be able to pick up a woman and not a man, but it's reversed on that. So, and that, even me, I'm a pretty strong guy, or used to be, and but I, I couldn't do that. I can get my dad off the ground. 
off the floor if he fell or something. But there will come a time when I might not be able to do that. Physic, my own self, physically. So I have to not only know my own limits, I have to keep reviewing my own limits. So that's what you should do. That's just my two cents. Think about it. Understand your limits before you become a caregiver. Because once you're inside of it, doing it, it's very difficult to detach yourself from it. And if you decide at some point the person you're caregiving for has to go into a nursing home or care facility or memory home or whatever, your family, the people that were going to support you, all jump on you like you're, you're ditching your father. You're you're abandoning your duty. La la la. They have lots to say because they're not the ones that have to do it. But notice, no one says, "Well, I'll take him now." They won't. Not most of the time. In any case, that's my two cents. A little uh. uh about my morning thoughts. And I hope everyone's doing good. And I'll see you again back here again soon. On my channel. Making videos with coffee. In a dark room. Because it is. 7.22 in the morning. Take care.